Morning everyone, welcome to another video. It is July 14. The plan for today was to make small square bales of hay, but last night we got four millimeters of rain. That's less than two tenths of an inch, but it's definitely gonna help the barley fill out. We were kind of worried about it just drying out and not filling the heads with any grain, but this will help. I was just talking to dad, I figured, you know what, this is just enough to not really do much for the barley and it's enough to ruin the hay for today anyway. Uh, it's definitely gonna take a bit of quality away from the hay. It's unfortunate, but dad says this is gonna help the barley in the fields fill out big time. So in the spring, if you get four mils of rain and the crop is still super short, it's just gonna dry right away and you're gonna lose all the moisture because it'll evaporate as soon as the sun comes out. But since the plants are now so tall, it's gonna kind of insulate that moisture and it'll be able to suck it into the ground. So. This is great. Uh, we're happy with this little bit of rain, even though it wrecks that little bit of hay that we had, but uh, we'd still rather get this on our 1600 acres or so of barley. And then, you know, whatever. I think it's not even 50 acres of grass hay that got rain on, so. Anyway, we're gonna finish the milking this morning. And then we got a couple of small jobs to do this morning yet. We have a rain gauge in the yard and that showed four millimeters of rain this morning, but we have another rain gauge in our furthest south field. And dad said he checked it out this morning, 10 mils in that one. So this rain for us was huge. We also have another yard and the guy living there has a rain gauge. He keeps pretty good track of the rain. Shout out to Doug. He, uh, he said he had 10 mils as well, which is that yard is closer to more land that we actually have. So. Incredible, incredible, incredible. We didn't expect this. It was in the forecast, but it was such a small amount. I think there was like a millimeter in the forecast, but uh, this is gonna do some, some good for our crops, that's for sure. We're out in that field that got the 10 mils of rain. Soaking wet boots. But if you just kick a little bit into the dirt, you can see there's a decent bit of moisture. We'll go check out that grass hay, see what that's looking like. So that's our grass. Was almost ready to bale last night. Not quite though, but um, we can see it's nice and shiny there. So this stuff got a good shot of rain on it, completely re-soaked it. When hay gets rained on, you always know it's gonna lose quality and feed value. But uh, I was not really sure exactly how that happened. So I did a little bit of uh, Googling here and found that um, quality loss is the most concerning issue surrounding rained on hay. Rainfall leaches sugars out of the plant tissue, which reduces the level of soluble carbohydrates and overall energy content. So I guess it literally leaches out the nutrition out of the hay, and that's why hay loses the quality when it gets rained on. It's really unfortunate, but uh, that's the way it goes. We're in the freestall barn now. Uh, these cows just got fed their feed. We locked all the head lockers, and now we got 11 cows to AI this morning. Miriam, she uh, just took her AI course a couple of months ago and she's been AIing cows as well now. So we're gonna let her try a couple. But first, what are we doing? We're marking out the ones that need to be AI. So. Yeah, so we got a list here of the 11 cows that we need to AI. So we're gonna walk in the front of all the cows and then we got these clothes hanger clips that we will put on top of the cows that we need to AI. So if that was one of the cows, we would be able to see from behind exactly which cows need to be AI'd. Works pretty good. That is not something that uh, we came up with. Dad read it in a magazine. 
I think the Veitelt, a Dutch magazine. Let's get at it. There's always a few cows on the list that don't end up locking up in the head lockers. So we just walk through and find them. This lady right here, 788 we need as well. So we'll just kick her up and then we'll try and chase her to the... Come on, lady. Oh, she's really enjoying her, her little nap. But we'll try and chase her to the head lockers and hopefully she's hungry, sticks her head through. She'll probably lock up. Sleeping pretty good. We just finished AIing those cows. That went pretty good. Yeah, I think so. I didn't have to help her out at all, so really good. All done in the barn for this morning. Now I'm going to hop in our Macdon swather and switch the headers around. Right now we got our Haybine header on there, and we're gonna switch it back over to the 35 foot Draper header. The reason we're doing that is because we hope to get into barley silage pretty soon. And we use the Draper header, not the Haybine header. Now we go find that Draper header. Draper header's on there. Should be pretty much ready to go now. Park it somewhere neat. Miriam's doing some raking this afternoon. Did get rained on yesterday, but this stuff is already looking pretty close to being able to be baled. So close. Yeah, and it's still a little bit green even after the rain. Obviously it's not great anymore, but it's still not bad feed. That rake does more than just put two swaths into one and speed up the baling process. It also flips that swath over. So it puts the bottom on the top and it gives the bottom of the swath a chance to dry out like the top already did. And it really helps getting the hay dry. So you're able to bale a lot quicker when you have a rake. At this point, we're just scratching our heads as to when we should start chopping. It's such a play it by sight thing. So just to give us a little bit of a better idea of what I'm doing right now, I'm walking out to one of the drier spots of this 220 acre field that we plan on chopping. 
We're gonna take a couple plants back to the shop and we're gonna do a moisture sample on it. We just wanna be really sure that this stuff doesn't dry out too quickly and get away on us. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna take uh, 10 plants or so, bring them back to the shop in the pail and see what moisture they're at. So step one, we're going to a drier spot in the field, like right here, good enough. So this is just a single handful. If I was really trying to get a whole field guesstimate, I would take a plant from that taller patch, a plant from the shorter patch, a plant from the edge of the field, and then a bunch more throughout, kind of walk the entire field. But we're just trying to see what a patch like this is right now. Because the, the corners and the heavier spots are just green. So we want to see what this is at. So we chopped up all those plants, put them in the cup here, and it amounts to 56 grams. I zeroed it with the cup on there, so there's 56 grams of plants there. Now we're gonna put it on the dryer here. Just blows up hot air through the bottom of this. And it'll dry that entire sample out, and we'll come back in an hour, and we'll know exactly what the moisture percentage was of that barley. So you finished raking that field? Yep. Right on. We're now gonna take the rake off this tractor and hook it up to the small square baler. Yeah. Instead of just like tumbling them, just climb up there and take the top tallest two and put them up. Yeah. Hello. Gonna make you some more small squares for your horses and the goats or what? Yeah, it's called hobby, hobby hay. hay, Jan. Hobby hay? Yes. Right on. Give me the gloves. <laughs> this is a very small patch of grass right in front of our farm looking pretty dry so we're gonna try this out first we got a bale counter on that small square baler gotta zero that real quick the third field well this is really the first real field the other two were well, the one was probably a one acre patch and the other one was maybe a five acre patch this field is at least 10 acres maybe 15 but uh i can already feel the dew in the air it's getting kind of more humid so we gotta definitely check this out better before we start baling it That is looking pretty tough. Call the boss and see if he wants me to go. Our moisture tester for the bales is not working right now. We just pulled it out of the round baler tractor from being in there over winter and it looks like it broke, which kind of sucks because those things are like 700 bucks. But we might have to pick a new one of those up. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to bale anything here. We'll see what the boss says. Gonna call it quits for today, try again tomorrow. I'm trying to get a ride home. Back at the farm, about done for the day. I just want to show you guys the new washer and dryer that we got. They're used commercial units. I guess they were at a laundry mat before because you can see where you're supposed to stick the coins in there. This is the dryer. It's taller than I am, so. This is a beast. It's for the milking towels. Look at the lint trap on this thing. Just insane. So that's the dryer. And then this is the new wash machine. These things are tough, big, bulky units. They're getting hooks up right now and hopefully we can use them pretty soon. The reason why we made this decent investment in these washers and dryers is because our regular ones that we always buy at Home Depot or Lowe's, uh, they keep on breaking with the towels they get used all day, every day pretty much, fully loaded. They're always ran on max and they just keep breaking every couple months. So that was adding up to quite a bit, quite a bit of cost. So we bit the bullet and went this route. I can't wait to start using these because those smaller ones, you gotta take the towels out down here. These ones are quite a bit higher and uh, it's gonna be awesome. So I figured I'd show you guys that before we end today's video. That is going to be it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. Check out the Instagram at SaskDutchKid. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.